All right, so now that we've used Excel to find the mean, we want to continue and try to find the population variance and the population standard deviation. Now, over on the right here, you can see the formulas that we used in class. And on the top, <clears throat> we take our data points, which are x, so in this case, the number 64, 67, 70, and so forth. And then we subtract off the mean, which is what we just computed. 70.1428, yada, yada, yada. We subtract the mean from every single one of those data points first. Then we take that value and square it. And we add it up for each one of our data points. That's this formula. If you haven't already had the chance to compute the variance by hand a couple times with small data sets, I strongly recommend that you get comfortable with the idea of computing this population variance uh, with small examples before you jump straight into this example where we're going to use grouped frequency data. Once we've done that, for the population we divide by n, but you'll see on the next slide here, for a sample we divide by n minus 1. And that's something that we discussed briefly in class and it's to guarantee that this estimate for the population variance is called unbiased. Once we've computed the variance, we would take the square root to find the standard deviation, just like we have in the past. All right, so once again, here's our grouped frequency data, and I've already got the data entered from our last video over on the left. The first thing I want to do is take the values that I have for x and subtract the mean. So in this case, I'll refer to it as x bar because it's a sample. Right here it says right in the question it's a sample. So we're going to do that. That's just to remind me what I'm doing up at the top. And then here I'm going to select the x value and subtract the mean. Now if I hit enter it works just fine. But if I try to copy this down you'll see something weird happens. The formula is not right. So this formula is right. But here as you can see it's doing 67 minus this, which is empty. So we could go through and move this up and fix it, but then of course the same problems here. So the better way to solve this problem is to actually come back to our original formula and instead of having C10 referenced in a dynamic way, which is what it is by default, we want to make it static. So we're going to insert dollar signs before the C and before the 10. Now if we bring this down, that value never changes. It stays fixed. So that's a helpful trick and one that we'll need again later in this class. So now that we've subtracted off the mean, everything's now centered around 0, as opposed to being centered around 70-ish. Using our formula, which we'll bring back here, we now want to do x minus x bar squared. So we'll just have to do equals this previous value, which we've already computed, and square it. And we can copy that down. Now, remember, I want to sum this up for every value of x. But in our grouped frequency data situation like this, we have two 64s, which means we have two contributions to this total sum from 37.73. We're going to have four contributions of 9.8, eight contributions of 0 0.02, and so forth. So unlike in a previous example where the data wasn't grouped by their frequency, here we need to add an extra step to help us do this summation where we multiply by the frequency. So this is now going to be f times x minus x bar squared. And I'll make sure that my windows are wide enough here that I can see what's going on. I just double click the width and it'll jump to the right width. So now I'm going to take the previous value that I've been computing and multiply it by the frequency. And this will go part of the way towards doing this summation process. But I'm taking advantage of the fact that I have repeated data points and instead of doing addition over and over I'm going to use a little bit of multiplication. Now that I've got these values, I bring that down, and I'm finally ready to do my total sum, 
like I have in the past. Now notice that this process is very reminiscent of what we did over here, where we wanted to find the mean. We had to multiply first by 2 to get 128. In the same way, I'm starting and trying to find the mean of these values, and so I have to multiply by the frequency before I do this final sum. Now for the standard deviation, I need to take, actually hold on, this is going to be the variance first. We're going to take this 224 and divide it not by 21, but by 21 minus 1. So here I need to use parentheses to make sure my order of operations is correct. And I'm going to do B8 minus 1. And when I do that, I'll get my variance. And then my final step is to compute my standard deviation. Once again, I'll format this pretty. And we'll be able to take the standard deviation, which is just the square root of our previous value. So we get a standard deviation of 3.35. As you can see over here, it does look like the data is spread out. If I go up or down three, that's most of the data. And that's what the standard deviation is trying to measure. Is if we start in the middle and go left and right by the standard deviation, that should capture a, a typical amount of the data. We'll have more theorems about that in the future. One other nice thing about doing this with Excel is that you'll notice we inputted these numbers. But everything else on this formula sheet, we've actually inserted not numbers, but we've inserted formulas referencing back to other values. This means I can use this same Excel document to do any other problem. Suppose I have a problem, but now 64 is 20 of those, there's 32 of these, there's only 7 of those, 100 of these, and seven. let's do 45 of those. Notice that all of a sudden, I once again don't have to update anything else, all these values have been corrected. So my mean is now 71, I have 204 data points, and my standard deviation has gotten a little bit bigger because I've spread the data out a bit. There's not as much at 70, and there's more at 64 and 60, 76 than there used to be. I could even change my x values and have this be 4, 13, 17, 20, 23, and now my mean and standard deviation have updated accordingly. So that's one of the really beautiful things about Excel is that once we've done this once, we can save it and make it look pretty and use it again later. So it's important that you're able to build this, but one of the motivations for building this is to avoid having to redo this every time. So feel free on the homework, once you've built it once, to use that again and again. Hopefully you'll also be comfortable building this on a test because you won't be able to access your previous document.